Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate. Welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. Um, I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about the difference between judgment and discernment. <laughs> it's a real good time to talk about it. It always was, however, it's terribly relevant right now so that we don't make quick snap decisions based on poor judgment or poor discernment, either one, um, and getting into the nuances and synonyms and things and assuming that judgment and discernment are the same thing um, in the context that I'm bringing it to you they are not not even close um, so when we discuss um, judgment that implies that we have an opinion or we're going to form one or we already have or you know something is already taking place in terms of our own internal dialogue of what we think about something what our position is on something whereas discernment is more about um, I like to think of it as more open-minded to allow the unfolding of what am I actually seeing here to discern um, what is actually in front of me rather than already judging what it is and then trying to um, get jiggy with it whatever it is um, such as you know if I have a prejudice about something um, will come out with that judgment you know I don't like um, tall people I don't know <laughs> something like that I don't want to assume that a tall person just because you know I have you know a bad judgment about them that they are bad you know all bad people are not tall and all tall people are not bad it would be very easy for me if I had a, a predisposition or an understanding with myself about tall people uh, it's quite possible that I would just be very prejudiced about them right off the top um, and that's not fair and it's not using really good judgment um, what good judgment to me you know that's a very dicey word all the way around and so for me um, if I inherently you know just have an issue with tall people because I was harmed by one and you know haven't been able to release that yet um, I want to discern you know if I start to feel a little bit of uh, you know concern about what's presenting itself to me I want to be able to discern what am I actually seeing and how am I actually feeling about what I'm seeing? And discernment is really about getting all of the facts about what's happening and using our intuition, using our guidance and formulating our past experience with our current ex uh, experience and the actual facts, figures, et cetera, with what happened then versus now. Or because we form our opinions based on some sort of information and that we gathered that we were willing to accept whatever it was and discernment is more about let's look at what's really here and then form you know the action going forward and skip all the judgment in between because judgment still it implies you know I have an opinion about this and it's generally supportive of that or it's not you know um, if we're judging people um, we're told to uh, judge do not judge harshly you know so it's already implied right off the top that judgment is you know um, a court case we're having a, a judgment on this we're having an opinion and there's usually you know some associated uh, penalty with it in our minds or at least you know how far however far up the chain um, it goes into the court system or just into the court system of my internal di internal dialogue would say that that's bad um, we're not generally judging things that are um, good unless it's a contest or something and then we're judging those that aren't that good and judging the one that's the best I mean <laughs> think about it in those terms whereas we're not discerning you know we don't have a discernment contest generally speaking we don't find the best singer by discerning which one it is we judge judge it we have an opinion and we form that opinion and go that one's the best for naming that number one um, discernment really isn't about choosing the best person the best personality the best situation um, it's the best action going forward for me and my interpretation and my understanding is discernment is about how do I navigate and uh, go forward in this situation in my understanding in whatever course of action it is um, I had an instance one time I was talking to someone that I knew very very well um, who uh, was in the New Thought movement and um, was probably considered to be more open-minded than most people because you know generally new thought does hold newer ideas um, very you know broad understanding of things that generally embrace a lot of you know integrative understandings from many different um, religions and spiritual practice so you know when I mentioned the idea of star seeds I got the you know <laughs> like our are you well? Do you know what you're talking about? You're, you know, really off your your nut there. Um, what? You know? And I was kind of surprised and like, wow, you know, this person is perceived as someone that's open-minded and yet um, 
they're, they're really, I can see we're not going to go anywhere with this. This is, you know, I can see the judgment already of, you know, what? That's bizarre. That's weird that, you know, and some real stank on the face of, you know, what was starting to just come shooting out of the eyeballs. And I felt uncomfortable, uncomfortable immediately. And my discernment said, oh, that's judgment. And you need to stop. Just don't even bother because that's not going to go well. Um, if I'd allowed my judgment to get a hold of her judgment and, you know, <laughs> start going back with our opinions about, you know, you're right, you're wrong. Um, she wasn't wrong for having a reaction. It's just, it's, it's not right. And it's wrong for me to stand there and, you know, try to coach that into some sort of understanding if there's just already a judgment made, you know, the, we're, uh, innocent, sorry, <laughs> we're guilty until proven innocent. Yes, that's very true. I started to say that and yep, Spirit said to say it exactly like that um, because that is kind of how humans operate. Um, but technically we really are innocent until proven guilty. So, you know, if we already go into something not even wanting to hear, not even really truly being open-minded on as many levels as we can be, we're gonna, you know, start making those, you know, faces and the outpouring of how we're expressing that unwillingness to really interpret um, what we're hearing, seeing, or taking in as anything but bad or wrong. Um, and if it's wrong, it feels bad. You know, if we're, you know, I, I got the, the stank right there in the moment of, oh, oh, <laughs> this person thinks I'm crazy. And, you know, if I really internalized that and took that as any more than what it was, which is, oh, that's just a poor understanding of what I'm saying um, and an unwillingness even to not agree with it is fine. However, an unwillingness to even hear really what I'm talking about. I can see we've shut down already. The open mind went, Weep, I'm not really open on that. And um, what would be the point? My discernment said, take that judgment and take it for what it is, which is a closed mind that you could waste a lot of time trying to explain yourself and why. Um, if it's going to really net the same result of not getting anywhere, I've just wasted my breath and my time and possibly really ignited some irritation in me and then start, you know, down that road of self-doubt or bother to, you know, think badly about myself because I could have just avoided it. But then also start thinking badly of that person too, that, you know, well, how come she didn't do that? She didn't love me. And she didn't, you know, um, it's not necessarily a matter of love. It's a matter of, you know, what we can tolerate in our own thinking. And it just kind of came as a shock to me that I'm like, you're out there with some Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of information. I thought you could handle this um, or that you'd be open to at least, you know, hear some stuff that I've been studying, you know, in quantum science and some other stuff and melding, you know, the sacred science together. Isn't this cool? <laughs> and um, I'm glad I didn't get, you know, real butthurt about it. I mean, it wasn't like, oh man, I feel smacked. Um, it was just the, uh, it was so shocking to me of the person that I viewed, you know, as being pretty open-minded about a few things, you know, in spirituality, many things, um, new thoughts, very open-minded, you know, metaphysical all the way, <laughs> um, and a lot of fun, um, and uses a lot of quantum understandings. And it just shocked me that, oh, that's not open at all. Don't even try when you're having to pry a door open, baby, just stop that. That's not your job. And you're going to irritate whoever's behind that door. And you're going to be irritated on your side of the door going, let me in. Um, the door was shut and please don't, I don't want you here with that information. Okay. Discernment tells me then don't judge that. <laughs> take that as the information it is and just move it another direction and you know don't be hating backwards and you know well how can you know skip all that that would be my judgment getting involved and um in case you're wondering um there's quite a possibility many people are not familiar with the term um star seed um and light workers and what have you we have a kind of an understanding and some new thought or ascended um understandings ascension understandings christos consciousness consciousness understandings um and energy healers um there is a, an understanding amongst many in that population of what star seeds are and it's the understanding that we're all stardust, okay? We all come from some other place besides just Earth. <laughs> and if we believe in, you know, the Akashic Records and reincarnation and, you know, those things, there there are people who, you know, are deep into understanding that there, we're more than just this 3D matrix thing. We're multidimensional, you know, we're a multiverse <laughs> all in one person and as, you know, an organism here on the planet as a whole. Um, and because we're all stardust, and we are made out of the cosmic juices of the cosmos we understand, the very small fractional amount of it that we understand so far, um, 
because of that, there are people who have formulated understandings based on their own internal dialogues and information from where they get their stuff that they come from other star systems. Their energy actually originates in other star systems besides just Earth, you know? And that's what I was explaining to her. I wasn't asking her, you know, to adopt the flag and fly it, you know, high. If you don't believe it, it's okay. I don't need you to join my bandwagon. I don't have one. I'm just, you know, I was super excited that this is really neat. I really identify with this and it makes so much sense, you know, um, reading about other people who experience um, life. You see, I got cut off by timer. People who experience um, life in a different way and they're willing to be very open-minded <laughs> in understanding some things that might answer their questions and it did. And apparently those weren't questions she was asking nor was she willing to hear, you know, the answers to questions that I had. Um, and she's allowed to, to have, you know, whatever reaction she has. It's just I, I learned in that moment, you know, a very sharp instance of, oh, <laughs> that's not open, that door's not open, and do not pry, you know, don't even try, just leave that out of your agenda, because you don't really have one, you don't need to, to not a crusade, you know, to, to join everybody up into the Starseed bandwagon, I'm not on that crusade, I just identify very heavily with the understandings, and, you know, I'm clear the messages and channelings that I'm getting are from someplace that you know, isn't relative to earth, you know, um, and that I guess was just too far outside the scope of what this person was willing to believe and was more willing to kind of look at me like, you know, and start throwing the shade on, you know, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And because this person at one point um, did have a position of power in my life to really, you know, really tool my emotions, you know, I have a lot of respect for this person and, you know, really bowed in a lot of ways um, to her personality and what she was about um, because I wasn't discerning very well. Um, I was judging very, very well <laughs> on my end as well. Um, I just wasn't quite as obvious probably with the you know, uh, I was just thinking it, which really isn't any better. Um, but I, I was um, not just, you know, piled into the dirt with it. It just shocked me that I'm glad that I don't really have that place um, in my mind or that position in my mind that you have the ability to, to destroy me because here I'm super excited with finding a new facet of understanding myself and those are questions that I have asked and I got the answer um, and I'm not sure I understand you know how this works that if I'm getting something you know into me that makes me a better person makes me less hostile angry sad you know broken tragic um, unhealthy toxic dysfunctional if it's information that's coming to me um, and it's really working for me um, are you really gonna be so hung up in the judgment that even if if you don't believe it I didn't need this person to jump on the bandwagon I don't need you to believe it I just thought you know this is so exciting this answers things and nope I'm, I'm not willing to even join you in your joy um, it answered a lot of questions for me that day it really did about who and what I was dealing with but in the broader context that's just my personal story to make it more relatable perhaps but in the broader context if we're you know really shut down and we're not really open-minded even if we think we are you know I'm I'm given an opportunity opportunity on the regular to um, open my mind because I put it out there to learn. I'm not going to learn if I'm not open-minded. Um, and people that consider themselves open-minded and they'll sit and listen to you know, someone's position and then make an argument against it, that's not necessarily learning. That's just building up the, the repertoire of, you know, um, commentary that's going to come spitting out against it you know we've we've taken position already and discernment really keeps us from taking a position on something unless it's a safety factor you know people can say and do whatever they want you know um it does not imply just because i sit and you know listen or, or will embrace you know lots of different topics doesn't mean that i agree with it or that it works for me the position of agreeance on that is really that that just doesn't serve me to go deep into you know um investigation discussion or you know activity in that direction that's all um if it's you know murder i'm i'm gonna have to put an agreement with myself that yeah i'm not gonna catalog that as a good thing uh however you know anything else short of safety factor or you know just blatant disregard for life um on any level then you know other people how they are bringing in their information experiencing their world and themselves themselves if it's bringing them to a better place of understanding 
you know, other people think the star seed light worker, all that is just ridiculous. It's stupid. Mm, you know, okay, it, that's fine. However, if it keeps me from stabbing you in the eye with a pencil, then, you know, maybe you want me to be over here <laughs> um, doing my thing, right? Because I definitely want you wherever you are, um, you know, thinking whatever you're thinking that's keeping you in a really cool, wonderful, and aligned place of peace and balance and healing and healthy, then please, you know, truck on and do exactly what you're doing, um, which probably wouldn't involve stanking on anybody else that's doing whatever they're doing <laughs> to be there and you know some of that I think that person probably didn't really realize just how you know limited that is that even spirituality is going to continue to evolve you know even new thought would be getting newer thoughts all the time and it is um, it's just that person had gotten kind of gotten stuck somewhere in the actual timeline you know the progression of time it just kind of stopped right there it, this is what I learned and and that's not my um, it's not my mantra to get stuck somewhere and just believe only this because the um, energy is always evolving. We're always evolving. Energy is, is neither created nor destroyed. It's just transmuting and transforming. And, you know, so if I can transform myself out of ignorance anywhere, then I learn how to be very embracing of new ideas and new concepts that are healthy. You know, I'm not talking about embracing things that are destructive in any way. I, I don't wanna know, you know, I don't have an open forum to learn about how to take out large populations of people with mustard gas. You know, that's not gonna be something that, you know, I'm gonna be open-minded about. I'm gonna discern that I don't need to be open-minded about that. That's not, doesn't serve for me to know more about that. And, you know, whether or not other people think it is that's their agenda and their spirit and their, you know, whatever they have to do and to keep my judgment of it out of it. Um, the discernment is that doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve humanity. Um, my discernment and my action is, I, you know, no action. It's non-action and it's absolute, not denial, but as in, no, 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 it's denial of I'm not adopting that. And the less stank I can put on it, um, the less, you know, negative energy that I'm going to be feeding into what's already, you know, a very negative concept. So, you know, when we talk about being open-minded, you know, as I said, I'm on the regular routinely reminded of, oh, I think I held a, a really dumb belief right there. Um, and, you know, as long as I'm kind with myself that, you know, I'm ignorant about something and somebody can say, hey, you know, Kate, have you considered this? Um, if they come at me and say, hey, you know, you're stupid. I can't believe you didn't think about this. I'm going to be less inclined, you know, to really want to open my mind to that. My discernment would have jumped in already and said, hey, this is a an attack um, and you know can you step back and we might be able to talk about this later if we're both you know in a level place to do that but it's already out of balance it's gonna be very difficult to do anything but judge and you know um, um, from one side or the other and it'd be way too in um, instantaneously ready for me to judge if you're an idiot I can't believe you came like that and I just I avoid those situations um, and and when those pop up that people you know automatically get that you know very challenged look I mean it shocked me I'm like what about this is making you angry you know or so like just had that that look I mean it just it shocked me so much I'm like my goodness you know what is that reaction why is that is that fear usually you know when we're angry we're afraid because <laughs> there's something we can't control um, and it just shocked me because it was so much in those eyeballs and then it started coming out of the mouth and I went well you know oh well we all have what we believe and I you know went kind of dorky you know nerdy or whatever <laughs> okay and um, I think that might have been one of the last um, in-person conversations that we had I, I really do because like that's that's a that's a real challenge for me to you know continue you know my discernment's telling me just just don't don't engage it and if I'm not there then I can't really um be put into the best position of, of stretching my boundaries on you know my judgment might jump up why would I test it you know um I'm wanting to be more in the investigatory phase of you know open-minded over here I already know what that is that's not very open-minded to keep going back and challenging the same you know test if I really want to get better at running I'm going to need to keep stretching the boundary of how far I'm running you know um not keep stopping short you know, I ran a mile Okay, you want to run a marathon, you probably ought to run a mile and a half and then two miles and then 200, you know, eventually, um, if that's your goal. If your goal is to run a mile and only a mile, that's great. However, I'm just more geared to want to run a million miles, you know, um, and to go, you know, further into things and investigate because that's just my personality. I'm curious and I like to keep, you know, very wide open to new ideas that support um 
alignment centers that are healthy and you know uh, give up the toxic stuff on every level anywhere that I can you know obliterate ignorance that's what I want to do in me you know it's not my job to educate the whole world I'm not going to be able to even if I tried um, because of things just like that the if the door's shut the door's shut and if there's no if there's gonna be an argument about you know um, a hello? No! Uh, oh, okay, well, the fact that it was slammed in my face, I could probably take that as a, you know, given that this person really doesn't want me talking to him about that, then, okay, I can take that, but if I do want to try, a, you know, hey, um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you, you seem to run into your uh, little hut there and slam the door in my face, you know, was there something I said that was offensive? Um, it, sometimes I'll check, you know, with people, did I somehow offend you? Because I have autism, and sometimes I'm just too blunt, and it does, um, it's not that I don't care, it's just I'm in an unfeeling mode, you know, about some things that I don't care if you agree with me or not, because I don't. I'm just happy to, you know, talk about stuff. And if you care that I agree with you, then that might run into a problem when I go, I don't agree with you, you know, <laughs> or, oh, huh, that's weird. You know, I, I'm te I tend to, you know, kind of get there and I have offended people who I actually went on to have very deep and meaningful conversations with and they were very kind and saying, you know, um, that's not the best approach with that. Um, and it was a learning point for me that I'm open to learning how can we communicate better because I want to hear your ideas. Um, I don't necessarily agree with every part of them, but I'm willing to hear, you know, how did, what's your logic on how you got to that? And if we can have that dialogue, that helps me open my mind with understanding more about the person that's in front of me, regardless of whether I agree with them or not. And I'm enjoying the experience because we're both growing through having our positions and the respect for another human being that it's irrelevant whether you agree with me or not are we enjoying this moment and we're in a holistic you know beautiful experience or you know is one of us trying to convince the other um, and because I really wasn't trying to be you know hateful or rude the other person was able to say um yeah check <laughs> um, uh, yeah that that's that, that really bothered me um, and I was so glad that that person was very willing to say that to me and in, in a kind way because I was able to to really reflect and see immediately that oh I guess yeah whenever you know I'm thinking about it from another person's perspective who you know is probably a little bit more tied into their emotions sometimes I can lock out and seem pretty you know cold and it's not that I'm cold it's just I'm in that analytical mode and I may not catch that I've been you know offensive to someone and I don't want to be offensive um, I'm not gonna chase down everybody that's offended because sometimes they're offended that your butt hurt for your butt hurt reasons and that has nothing to do with me and discernment will let me know um, you know if you slam the door in my face we're not gonna get very far in that conversation about how you think I offended you or how I actually might have um, I mean I offended you on some level but the why you know some of that's mine to carry when people are willing to be honest with me about you know yeah that was a little bothersome and I'm also willing to do that too but not at a closed door where I'm begging someone, please, you know, please accept me. I'm so sorry. Um, that's codependent, and I, I don't do that. You know, that's <laughs> it's just not something I do, and that in and of itself can cause a lot of butt hurt feelings because, you know, I'm not going to chase you down if you slam a door in my face. I'm not going to chase you down and ask you what I did, you know, unless I know if I was just digging hard and like, mm, you know, trying to be nasty, which is not my general, you know, um, course of events. I don't generally go that way because I don't like it. You know, I don't like it done to me. And um, once I got out of that whole, you know, codependent and toxic ass cycle, you know, I really, I don't do that. But when somebody's willing to say, you know, wow, um, let's talk about that, you know, or I can self-reflect and say, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm pretty sure that I was inappropriate there. Um, was I inappropriate? Did you feel, um, and we're honest, you know, that's really what's most, um, relevant in discerning is getting to the truth and the honesty of what I'm feeling about this and you know judgment there's is not necessarily honest you know judgment is based in opinion and opinion is not always based in honesty and the truth you know gravity truth you know not my opinion of what gravity is um, what is the truth of this what is the law of this not the you know my law in my mind is that homosexuals are bad you know no that was an earth law that was a human law however it's not a universal principle um, I like to go there with what's the most you know truth and honest and law like universal law that I can get in this is communicate with this person on a very you know truthful honest level 
keep, you know, water leveling, you know, gravity, speed of light, that kind of integrity and honesty to the conversation, then it doesn't really matter whether we agree or not because we're meeting that honesty with, I, I don't understand what you're talking about, Kate. It's kind of frightening me. It seems a little out there that maybe your mental health is being challenged hard right now. You're talking about, you know, alien stuff. You know, that would have probably, I don't know, because we never got that far. That might have been what was going on for that person when I mentioned star seeds. Could have been. Um, and because we did not even remotely go down that direction, there wasn't a willingness um, on that person's side to even address it or act like it was anything but me just being nuts. Um, I'm not gonna you know, waste the time on that because the integrity of the relationship is already quite challenged. you know, um, And it's gonna be difficult to do much of anything except want to just adhere in a codependent or toxic relationship. If I carry, that person carries a lot of weight in my mind and importance and their opinion matters, I'm gonna wanna just adhere to, oh, I can't really talk about that. And then I might really not adopt ideas that really serve me well and help me to be a better person, you know, alien based or not, we're all stardust and we're all alien esque to some degree, you know. And if I agree with reincarnation or I don't, or the Akashic Records, or you know, light workers, star seeds, earth angels, the Bible, the Quran, um, physics, you know, whatever it is, if we're honest and we're very straightforward with one another, and we can meet each other at a very um, high level of integrity which will keep judgment of, you know, from coming into it because there isn't gonna be a need on either side for us to convince the other. We're just sharing time, space, and, you know, air together, and we're enjoying the experience or we're not, and if we're not, we probably should, you know, should. We probably could and, and would serve ourselves to either figure out why or, you know, I, I left shortly after that. I really did. I was like, oh, this changed the whole vibe of this experience and it's unpleasant. I'm going home now. And I did. And I'm pretty sure that was one of the last um, conversations that I had, maybe next to the last that I had with that person is like, oh, this is just, it's crumbling. Um, the matrix going down and you don't want to hear about it. Okay. And I have to allow for people to have their space and not judge them harshly for it um, or judge them, you know, not so harshly, not judge them at all. It's not my place. I'm not the one that gets to do that and I also am not the one that has to allow others to do that um, because they're stuck you know misunderstanding that and we're not none of us is has the right to um, judge or imply our practice or our, our standards on someone else um, it, truly we, we have and we've created human laws all over the place um, to keep behaviors in check um, and they're way out of balance which is why you have you know people looking at alternative ideas that aren't rooted in something you know that's outdated it's not relevant we're on to some other stuff you know I want to be open-minded so I can serve the planet and serve my own health and not be drawing on the resources of other people because I'm angry can confused and shut down and close minded not believing something that that could be helpful to you you have no idea um and if something's helpful to me doesn't mean i'm going to adopt the whole thing you know um i pick up little tidbits of information as they're helpful and let go of anything that's not you know um but i never let go of the truth i carry the truth with me and let everything else go i don't take what i want to out of that and leave the rest i take the truth of what i'm hearing and experiencing and leave the rest which is quite different from that person was one that would say very frequently um in a church setting, you know, take what you want out of this and leave the rest. Like, uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm going to take the truth of what this is, which is a slam door in my face of, I don't want to hear it, Kate. Okay. Then the truth is we probably don't have much future and we didn't, you know, I didn't slam that door myself. You know, I, I simply, it provoked and challenged a part that that person just wasn't willing to even remotely look at. And that's a huge part of me. And so it's going to shut down me and cause me to have to alter how I would behave in the future while engaging in that a relationship with that person. And like, uh, that's what codependency is. And I'm really not about that anymore. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that because this is a huge part of me. And if I have to, you know, shut my own door on my own self just to engage with you, then I'm asking, you know, like for three quarters of my lungs to just don't breathe for a little while, just don't work. You know, I'm just gonna plug those up right quick and only use this part. No, my whole body, my whole psyche, my whole um, faculties and my spirit come with me everywhere I go. And if I can't really express that in honesty, 
without it, you know, turning into a brawl of some kind. Um, and it actually did at one point with somebody else. They got real super physical with something I said, you know, like, oh, um, it wasn't about Starseed, but I mean, this person came out and he started coming at me physically. I'm like, oh my God, you know, that's, I've, I've got to get out of here because, um, you know, this isn't about judgment. If you're bad because you did that, it's uh, bad that you're trying to harm me based on, you know, I asked a question and it provoked you to a very dark place. So, you know, my discernment on that is that I'm going to have to go now um, and work very hard not to have a, you know, stink, you know, you know, a judgment, an opinion about it. The, there wasn't an opinion. The discernment is that this is a safety issue and no. And I'm pretty sure um, I saw that person one more time. The next time was just a few days later and it was highly uncomfortable and I've never seen her since. So, you know, getting out of those toxic cycles is learning the difference between judging. You know, when we're busy going back with the mm, back and forth, uh, we're risking at this point life and limb. And, you know, I saw that very clearly when the, the one person was like, you know, and started coming at me physically. I went, oh, yeah. Shit, I'm gonna have to go. You know, I'm, I'm in danger here, and I was. I was in a lot of danger and saw more of that play out. I just didn't see the actual person, but a whole lot more danger that left me in places, you know, of um, extreme vulnerability. And I just didn't understand that, no, 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 this isn't about, you know, being judgy of what happened. It's about discerning what you need to do to go forward to find safety and peace. Um, whether you are talking, you know, starseed junk or not, this is a, a humanoid experience where you're in your body and it's being challenged and your safety is being challenged, it doesn't matter, you know, what anybody's judgment of you is, or your judgment of them, the discernment is, this is a safety issue and get the hell out of here right now on every level, whatever it takes and leave out the portion of, well, mm, on my side, you know, yes, I have my story and, you know, I was angry and stuff for a long time. However, you know, to continue the, the very closed door ethic of I'm not going to, you know, look at this person as anything except a butthole. How dare they? What could, were they thinking? The minute, you know, it's not going to help. It's going to keep me in that cycle down there and doing the same exact thing. And that's going so extinct, you know, bye. That's the age of Pisces. Bye bye. We're not on that anymore. We're not collectively aligned. Then why do I want to tell myself stories about, you know, any opinion I'd have about it? My thoughts on it, yeah, I have some thoughts and, you know, the less I verbalize them and turn them into a whole, you know, formed um, judgment and opinion and, eh, you know, et cetera, the discernment was just keep moving, keep moving and keep telling your story. And if it's applicable to people that can help them get out of their um, dark places and their dark, you know, attachments with people or dark attachments from people, um, that's all codependency and toxicity and whatever level it's holding me back. It's keeping me from investigating star seeds and quantum science and astronomy and astrology and things that really just serve me better and make me a better human being that doesn't want to, you know, harm someone or, you know, get, you know, uh, completely triggered at something someone would say, you know, um, I don't want to be that close and on the edge that I might actually lurch at someone. And uh, that person would have laid hands on me if I hadn't said, I'm not sure why you're coming at me like that. You seem to be coming at me pretty physically and you're screaming. I'm not screaming at you. I'm talking to you and I merely asked you a question. I'm sorry, there was something offensive in the question. It wasn't my intention and that's exactly how I kept it. But that person really had to take a minute of like, <laughs> and I was so shocked again. I was like, um, I've known you my whole life and I've seen this look before, but not since, you know, there were single digit numbers of how old we were, you know, this is, this is really challenging me right here with, uh, what's going on. Um, and you know, it's, it's where we are triggered and where we are, you know, there with what's going on. And that just happens to be where that person was. And that's a great deal of insecurity, um, where discernment just is, I'm very secure in myself and you know, my positions, um, and I stand fast on my positions. However, you know, discernment is the security and the safety within me of knowing that um, I have faith in what I have faith in, and it's not to, you know, need you to align with my position. I need you to align with your position. I don't need that. You do. <laughs> you know, I mean, we all do. We, we all need to be aligned in our own um, most holiest spot. And if there's a whole lot of you know, stinking, that's not the most holiest spot. And it just isn't. Look around, we can see that it's not, it's very evident it's not. And the system's being torn down, whether I agreed with it or not, it's being torn down. Um, I'm seeing that, you know, and I can fantasize and bullshit myself a whole lot about how it isn't happening. No, 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 that's not what it is. It most certainly is. Um, Age of Aquarius is here and we're, we're going to do that love thing. Damn it. <laughs> you know, we're going to do the dawning of the, the dawning is here. You know, it's, it's here. It's arrived and Pisces 
energy and not Pisces people, just Pisces energy of, you know, eh, um, the domination of the age of Pisces and stuff and the restrictions and things. That's just, it's leaving. It's, it's gone. You know, we're now phasing and galactically and cosmologically we're aligned to be doing other things. And so, um, keeping the triggers down to a minimum it doesn't mean that I'm gonna you know alter who I am I'll just bring one quarter of my lungs so I don't offend you too much with how much I'm breathing you know not that it's just that if I can keep you know the conversation um, calm and collected you know, then it's not my desire to just trigger people. Um, when they get there, though, they expose a whole lot about themselves and what they're really about. And um, sometimes it's quite shocking. Sometimes it is quite shocking to go, oh, wow, uh, okay. Uh, my, my, my judgment, none. My discernment, I gotta go. You know, <laughs> reading the scene here, reading the room, and there's danger. Beep, 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 abort mission. So anyhow, it's enough time been spent. Um, I'm gonna have to splice this together anyway. So um, thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it, and I hope you're well, whatever part of the day you're in enjoy it my friend and get within your own skin because you're divine absolutely fine take care of yourselves and i'll see you again next time bye friends